Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. When it has been decided a reline should be done, the first thing to do is adjust the occlusion. When the occlusion has been adjusted, any gross undercuts on the tissue side of the denture should be relieved with an acrylic burr. This will help the laboratory when the denture is processed. The borders of the denture should be examined in the patient's mouth. Any borders that are short should be border molded with compound and checked again in the patient's mouth. The posterior border of the denture deserves special attention. This border should be checked with the indelible pencil. The denture or border molding should be exactly where the posterior of the finished denture is to be. When the borders of the denture have been established, a hole is drilled with a number four or number eight round burr in the highest point of the vault of the denture. Because we are to use light-bodied rubber base impression material, the tissue surface of the denture is coated with rubber base adhesive. Notice that the adhesive is carried slightly over the borders of the denture onto the labial and buccal surfaces of the denture. Mix approximately two inches of light-bodied rubber base accelerator with the same amount of light-bodied base material. Distribute the impression material evenly in the denture being certain that some of the impression material covers the border of the denture. Place the denture evenly in the patient's mouth. When you are certain the denture is seated correctly, have the patient close into the accepted occlusion. The patient is to maintain this position until the impression material has set. This should take approximately eight minutes. When the impression material has set, remove the denture from the patient's mouth and check the impression for bubbles and flaws. Once the impression is accepted, the posterior border should be reduced to its predetermined length with sharp scalpel or scissors. The outline of the posterior palatal seal is now traced on the impression with a thin layer of sticky wax. Note the posterior palatal seal usually includes the fovea palatinus, then extends laterally through the hanular notch. Once the thin layer of sticky wax has been outlined on the impression, it is covered with a layer of number four correcto wax. The impression is now placed back in the patient's mouth and held with slight pressure until the number four correcto wax has flowed. This should take approximately three to five minutes. Remove the impression from the patient's mouth. If the correcto wax has flowed and adequate retention has been demonstrated, the impression is completed. If retention cannot be demonstrated, 
more correcto wax should be flowed on the posterior palatal seal until retention is demonstrated. You must be certain that the wax has flowed in the mouth and can be seen to overextend that part of the posterior border. This excess material should be removed before the cast is sent to the lab. A laboratory prescription is filled out and the case is sent to the laboratory. Do not pour the impression in stone. The laboratory will do this for you. When the denture is received back from the laboratory, the tissue side of the case is examined for acrylic bubbles or flaws. These will be removed if found. Now the tissue surface of the denture is painted with pressure indicating paste. The denture is carefully placed in the patient's mouth and then removed. Interference and undercuts are removed from the tissue surface of the denture. The areas are then repainted with pressure indicating paste and the process is repeated until the denture is seated. Finally, the occlusion is checked and adjusted. The case is polished and the patient is dismissed. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.